Yes, uh, today in history, of course, uh, the death of uh, Chief Bola Ige. Uh, this uh, happened many, many years ago. And of course, the Nigerian government is still being urged to, you know, uncover his killers uh, so that justice may be served. But this morning, our first major conversation, we're moving to Magodo Phase 2, where there was some controversy, or there has been, in the last few days, after, you know, hoodlums, according to the residents in the area, um, you know, numbering, you know, dozens or maybe even hundreds, uh, stormed the place with a bulldozer, attempting to seemingly demolish some buildings that had been marked for demolition over there. Uh, we, of course, uh, speaking this morning with Baris Atunji Abdul Hamid, who is a resident of Magodo Phase 2, uh, to give us, of course, uh, more updates on what exactly has been going on um, over there. Good morning, Baris Abdul Hamid. Thanks for joining us. Good morning for having me. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, so quickly share with us, you know, just a refresher on what exactly is uh, uh, going on in Magodo Phase 2. Um, you know, where is this coming from and what exactly has happened in the last 48 hours? Yeah, thank you for the opportunity once again. Uh, I, I can tell you, even though we still have um, the police people from Abuja still in our estate, over 100 of them, they are still waiting for signal from the IGP, according to them. But uh, the detention is uh, down because um, we were with the state government sent a delegation to us yesterday. We met with them. They also met with the police from the Abuja. Um, Abuja police uh, people, and then they also met with the family, and then uh, it, it was agreed that everything was suspended, and the government will look into it, and the government is already on top of it. Like I, as I'm talking to you today, I'm, I'm not sure there's any tension we have because I left the house. But as, at the time I left, there was no tension, but I am aware that the police are still within our premises in Magodo, and uh, that is just the situation on the ground now. Uh, let me give you the genesis of what happened. Or, or what, uh, let me start from two days ago. Because it started uh, before yesterday. We saw numbers of uh, police and policemen, mobile and the ordinary policemen, in the, within our gates. And uh, I was driving into the estate at that time. And as uh, later I got on the estate, I stopped back to find out what is, the, what is happening here. And they said uh, they are there to enforce the um, judgment of the court. I said, which judgment? They say I should go and see the beliefs and the whatever. Where are the beliefs? I couldn't see any. What I, what I, what I saw were, were hundreds, hundreds of uh, people that look like thugs or hoodlums uh, uh, parading themselves as a... Uh, where, where is the order? No one could give me anything. The best I could see was a public, uh, newspaper public uh, notice issued by the family. That is the only thing I can see in my hand. And they even flashed it at me, not that they gave it to me. So when that happened, I said, if that is the case, if they're not going to give us anything, I would direct that they get the law. And the police officer who led them said, if you do that, I will shut you dead. And then, uh, so, thereafter, the attention down down, because at that time I was the only person there. Thereafter, about five or six people joined us, and they, would, they become friendly at that level. So, they started marking the houses in the estate, and they, they, they said they were asking based on the Supreme Court judgment between the Lagos government and the uh, Adega family and the Wilder family from, Adega, from the Sangisha Landlord Association. So that is the genesis in that regard. The judgment, uh, we are not aware that uh, there is judgment or court order which empowers them to come and execute the judgment in our estate. And today, they have not shown us any document to that effect regarding court order. That is exactly what, did, what happened in the So when, in order to protect ourselves, when we realized that uh, they were still within our premises and they will not go, and they are still marching up to the T5 o'clock, we called a meeting of the residents, and then it was agreed that we should stay at our gate. And that day we stayed up, we stayed up to 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. I say I was there to 3 a.m. And then uh, we said we should get up back at 6 o'clock, and that nobody would be allowed to go out or come into the estate. Because uh, we are afraid, because at, at, at 7 o'clock, they brought a uh, bulldozer in front of our estate. This, it was stationed in front of the estate. And we later, at, at around 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, we pressurized them to remove the uh, bulldozer. And it was taken to the other gate of, of, of Magodo. We have two gates. We have the Sanguza gate and we have the Setia gate. We were taken back to the Setia gate. And then uh, 
uh, and then they, they, were, they were there. So we were there, we came out uh, in, our, in our numbers uh, yesterday, and we were able to create a, what we, uh, uh, what's it called? We were able to show the world what is happening in our city, and they were able to get the attention of the government to, to come to our rescue in that regard. Because we, there is no judgment against anybody in that Magodo. There is nothing to be enforced against anybody in that Magodo, and I'm not aware of any other that either. Okay. So, um, can you also tell us what is the fate of uh, residents right now at Magodo Phase 2? Uh, what are they doing? Have people been displaced? Uh, what is really going on? Have they been restricted from having access to their homes and other spaces? Uh, no, that has not happened. Nobody has been displaced because there is nothing to displace them. There is no cause for alarm regarding the ownership of property in Magodo. There is no cause for alarm for anybody because people are spreading rumors that uh, they cut out order that uh, they take over the land from the people who own Magodo. If anybody in Magodo today who owns property or their uh, the property liberally from the government, you will have to them and they have a certificate of occupancy. That agreement of property has not been reported by the government. And they are not aware that any land, that, 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 that same land has been reallocated to anybody. So as far as I'm concerned, those who own land in Magodo today have no cause to, 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 to fear because there is no judgment or there is no we say the property should be to and on the their property to anybody. Whether it's a visa land organization, whether they are a legal family, or whether whether any other or any other person for that matter. Even the government has not informed the title the title given to them. So they ask, I want to allay the fear of everybody. So there is no cause for alarm regarding ownership of property in my God. Because people have been sending rumors that it, uh, we are, they, they bought a fake uh, uh, property. All right. Uh, Barrister uh, uh, Abdul Hamid, you, you, you just hold on and stay with us. Uh, we have a quick um, report that was done on this uh, situation and we'll share that with our viewers and then we'll, we'll get back to you. Uh, so just stay, uh, stay with us. Only, please. Esco only. Esco. Well, I can address the president. Okay. Where is the chairman? Where is the chairman? Good morning, President. Morning. Good morning again. Good morning. This is, this is our. This is our. My name is. Chairman. My name is Princess Bolale Bada. We, we know you. We know you. Know only you. princess is a mayoress. The mayoress of the position <laughs> Well, I actually want just to want to appeal to the other residents here in Magodo, that uh, indeed the state government, I have been sent by Mr. Governor himself, that is suddenly behind the, the resident in Magodo. That what happened yesterday night is that he, he, has, never, he, he has never been informed. And uh, that they, they did that just because they had the Supreme Court. Yes, that could happen, but they have to get the state government informed. And uh, he has promised that he's going to sort the whole thing out and that we should go all about our job. Journey, and that there's a statement that's going to be issued out in some hours by the attorney general himself to, you know, to, to calm the whole resident and to assure them that this is Lagos State and that it's capable. The Amable Governor is a leasing governor and that it's capable of taking care of whatever and whatever happened in the state. And this is not going to happen again. And we promise that all the things that happened yesterday, we apologize and on behalf of the state government. We never did anything wrong because we came quickly to intervene into the matter and the immediately that I got informed was the, was the immediately uh, then there was when I intervened and the whole thing were, you know, calm and still we still want to apologize because a lot of people might have missed the appointment medically, whatever. So I want to apologize again. We are very sorry. I will continue to, you know, monitor whatever is going to happen. They will not come in. They don't take anything, any uh, property here in Magodo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, there you have it. Uh, Barrister Tunji Abdul Hamid, uh, can you still hear us? All right, so, so quickly share with us, you know, from that uh, video clip, um, what the state government is saying, you know, and um, how much assurance the people of, people of uh, Magodo Phase 2 currently have. 
I can't get it, correctly. I'm asking, can you quickly share with us, you know, what you've heard from the state government and the assurance that the people of Magodo Phase 2 currently have? Yeah, aside from that, uh, 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 what do you call it? By the mayor, that is the, 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 the chairperson of the coast local government who delivered the government, uh, let's say that. The, uh, in the afternoon, delegation also came from the governor led by the by the commissioner for physical planning and the other members of the uh, the, the uh, land bureau. The second secretary was there, the PS was there, and some other people were there. We met with them, and they were apparently that uh, everything is in order. They will they, they will they will they will be ready to engage the family and to find a lasting solution to the problem. They also have the 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 they also met with the family and they asked them to. Uh, uh, all right. Can you share with us? I'm not sure if you if you know well enough, you know. But can you share with us exactly who these persons are, the ones who came with the bulldozer, um, you know, to try to enforce, you know, that court ruling that they they claim they have? Who exactly are they, and why do they claim ownership of the land? No, I said it earlier that uh, sometimes in 1988. Uh, no, before 1988, sorry, that was when the ship was right. Right. The, the Sometimes, uh, before now, Magdalene was a place that, uh, a, a, a plain land, and the government acquired the land, and then thereafter, from, from people who claimed to be the owner of the property. And uh, there was an issue regarding the, the what's it called, the, the, the acquisition. They went to court to challenge the government on that, on that regard. And uh, the government did, did not. Uh, Attended uh, the court, the letter I am able to understand, there was an agreement and everything was resolved. And uh, that, is, that solution was led to the, to the judgment. Unfortunately, the way the judgment was captured or drafted was not in the favor of the, of the family because it was not properly drafted. It was, it was ambiguous, vague, and has no direct uh, uh, link to the property being talked about. The argument was that, uh, at the, at which uh, later became judgment, was that the government should give them. Over 49 plus in Tangisha, where that place would be, it's not taken. It was not identified. Where, whether it would be in this place or in that place, there's no surface to ascertain it. No one no has ascertained the document. That was the judgment, that was the cause of the matter. The government never give them, give them any, any sort of land, and then they, they were not able to get anything. The government. And then, then after, they obtained a list of possession, which means they want to enforce the judgment. Then uh, we became aware of that. Because at the time when the case was going on at, at, at the court, my government was not part of it. We now we became aware of it. We now went to court to challenge the list of possession. On the ground that we are not part of it, on the ground that uh, the, 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 the list of possession cannot be enforced against us. Because there is no specific explanation as to the property of the enforced. Of the, of the, of the, of the, the court agreed with us, set aside the list of possession. And then when they, they are not happy about it, they appeal against it, and the matter is currently on appeal. The matter comes up in February, the second. So I wonder why they, they, they are now coming to the water and project. I don't know where they got the judgment that they want to enforce. What the matter is still in court. I invite you to wait for everyone to Even the family, there are two parts. So there are two parts. So the family, they get to the other part of the family, they leave a, a, a statement, they are themselves of what happened. And they call they are saying that what the, what, what the other part, part B is illegal and they are not in part of it, support of it. That is what is the solution now. So, so what would uh, be, you know, the case with some of the buildings that have been marked? Because, I mean, looking at the video now, you see that some structures have been marked for demolition. Should we, or sh would there still be a demolition of these structures? It was not marked by the government. It was not, it was not marked by any other court. It was marked. Illegally, so yeah, anybody can, you can, we can, it can be clean that because it, it, was, it was not without any authority. You can see there was no, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the particular of the risk execution was not stated in that, in that, in that, in that, in that, on that building. So, the uh, apartment was a mere destruction of property just that they did. They just destroyed, they just destroyed the property owned by people. People can go back and then uh, clean it up. There is no, there won't be any content because there's no order, of course, to that effect. So at this point now, can you also tell us if you still have the presence of uh, the men of the Nigerian yeah, police? Can you tell us if you still have the presence of the men of the Nigerian police 
uh, you know, yeah. in the estate? I said it. They, were, they are still around. They are still around. They are still within our premises. They are within they, they they they, they, they the premises of the police, uh, police approach within our estate. They were there. They, were, they, were, they said they are waiting for signal. So these are the same police officers who came, you know, uh, 48 hours ago? What is that? These are the same police officers that came 48 hours ago with the, with the plans to demolish. Yes, yes. They, they, came from, they came from Abuja. They came from Abuja or the other YGT. They are not from Lagos. They are not Lagos commander or whatever. They are from Abuja. And they thought it, it's by order of IRGP. I mean, so isn't that still a problem uh, if they still are in the estate? If they still are in the estate? And is the is the is the borders are still around Magodo? Yeah, I'm not aware that the borders are still there. No, I've not been to that place this morning. Okay. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm not sure they can they can do that again. Whatever they are doing now, even if the one what they did in two, two days ago is taking law into their hands, and it's not it's not it's not it's not good. Unfortunately, they are being bad by the police without any court order. Yeah, and, and that's what I was asking. Isn't that still a problem? If, if we have police officers who claim to have come from Abuja uh, to enforce a court uh, order and uh, they still have refused to leave the estate even after, you know, uh, contrary orders have been given. Um, isn't that a problem? And is that, is that worrisome for residents? No. It may, be, it may be worrisome, but as it is, they are not, they are not disturbing anybody, they are not harassing anybody, they are not, they are not, they are not, they are not, they are not making any effort, they are just there in their own domain. There's nobody being harassed, nobody being threatened, no violence, nothing. So I don't see why, there should be a cause for worry, because we should be worried at all. What are they still waiting for? But there's no violence, there's nothing. Okay, um, you know, uh, for... You have actually mentioned uh, uh, the fact that the properties were not illegally gotten. Uh, we're hoping that we're able to, you know, uh, speak and identify those on the other hand uh, who would also be talking about the court order uh, because, uh, I mean, it's a little bit not so clear who these persons are. You say the factions you have, well, a no, family with different the factions. It's one of the parties. Okay. They so as, as, a legal, like as, a legal, as a legal as a legal practitioner it. now, can you please take us through... Um, you know, the process, what, the, what would it require if one is to get, uh, acquire a property or to get, uh, you know, maybe a landed property or a house? What are the procedures? What should one do uh, to avoid all of this kind of confusion? I engage your, I get, I get your lawyer, do due do, uh, do diligence. Don't, 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 don't be thinking about money. Pay your lawyer to do good job for you. Don't, 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 don't see that they wait. Sometimes you can do the event and then the property will not be good and you see that the money has to wait. It is good to prepare that okay. So what you need to do is to engage a lawyer, let the lawyer do proper touch, and then they will be able to attach accordingly. Because you cannot, there's no, there's no single way of how to determine whether a property is, is clear or not. It depends on what, what the property is and it depends on the document available. Yeah. But Mr. Tunji, uh, Maguno Phase 2 is a pretty large area. Uh, it doesn't make, um, it doesn't seem realistic. You know, that persons can come with one bulldozer and decide to break down all the houses in Magudo Phase 2. So did this seem like it was some level of intimidation uh, to chase residents out of Magudo Phase 2 and not necessarily with plans to demolish the whole area? Yeah, uh, intimidation is one, is one of it. And you know, in Nigeria, once they are able to knock down one or two, or, or two buildings, they are embedded and they are able to do more. That's what they are trying to do. Okay. Um, will more legal actions be taken? Well, absolutely. Absolutely. That is, that, that is being considered. Okay. Before we go, I, I just want us, you know, some clarity on why exactly they have chosen Magodo Phase 2. Because like you said, the judgment, you know, asks that they be given 149 plots of land with no specific areas mentioned. Um, so is there any insight as to why they chose Magodo Phase 2 as, as where they want? So they claim that it's the original land that was taken away from them. And since it was taken away from them, they, 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 and the court has said there should be a uh, number of plots from there. They, they are entitled to it. That's what they are claiming. All right. Barrister Tunji Abdul Hamid, thank you very much once again for joining us and uh, for sharing your thoughts with us. We look forward to speaking with you again in, if there's um, other developments on this issue. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. And this, you know, honestly just uh, tells a lot about um, the controversy concerning who controls the police.
um, because it's, it should still be a concern for President Maguro, seeing the same police officers who came, who well, supposedly came from Abuja uh, to enforce a court order, uh, still being in, you know, Maguro phase two, instead of going back to where they're coming from, um, you know, since that's not going to be happening anymore. And of course, seeing that the, the state governor cannot, you know, ask that they leave because he doesn't necessarily control the police. Mm -hmm. And from what um, Mr. Abaris Abdul Hamid has said, they're waiting for orders from above, above. Or from, from the IGP. And, and so it therefore means that up until, um, you know, they get the signal from uh, the Inspector General of Police or from above, they will still be there until whenever. But I'm just wondering, you know, the part, because it feels like a power play right now. I really do not understand uh, the fact that we have this serious might. Because if you look at it, it's a might that we're seeing presence of government. Uh, the fact that you have to have police officers coming all the way from Abuja, uh, you know, to Lagos, and not necessarily because he's mentioned that they are not from the Lagos command. And so I am just still trying to understand who and who is involved and who is behind, you know, all no, of this. Necessary. For, for me, what this really says to me is, you know, that there is, like you mentioned, this power play. You know, but if you have the right connections in Nigeria, you can get, you know, some level of enforcement from some office um, someplace in Abuja and it will be carried out. Because every now and then you hear of people that, you know, were arrested by IGP special response team and things like that. And you start to wonder, you know, why didn't the police officers in the state where the person was arrested uh, take action? You know, why, why, you know, are police officers leaving a different state to pick somebody up and then fly the person to Abuja for a case that didn't necessarily happen in Abuja? Um, and also, you know, like, you know, like I mentioned, you know, the fact that you can, you know, if you have some level of influence or power, um, you can, you know, get en enforcement from the Inspector General's office. And this doesn't even look good for the Inspector uh, General of Police and his office. Um, and, you know, these are some of the things that should be corrected immediately because it doesn't make any sense why they are still there if there's not going to be any enforcement of any court order. And what exactly, or which court order, which court documents were shown to the IGP, you know, before he then released police officers to go to Magodo Phase 2 to enforce, you know, a demolition. And uh, we're talking about uh, something that happened 38 years ago. So my point is, I'd like to come to the human part of it. So the big question is, you send police officers, you send bulldozers and tractors and what have you, to go destroy houses. Where are they going to move? I mean, let's even assume that, uh, let's assume that, you know, the court order is anything to go by or the court order exists because you also hear uh, the representative or spokesperson uh, from the governor saying that they're not aware of any court order and they were not informed and what have you. So my point now would be, um, even if there was a court order, how do you, you know, move with that speed and go build those houses of people without any prior notice and information. And what is the plan for compensation? Because that's a long time. People have actually invested monies. People have, you know, put out monies. These are not just uh, baby structures. These are super structures that have taken years, properties, life and livelihood of persons. And so how, how do you expect them? Where would they be rehabilitated? What is the compensation plan? Whatever the case may be, whatever the case is, I'm thinking that it's something that, you know, would have to be uh, sorted out on the table. Before you move, it's going to be a lot of confusion. Not no. especially at this part, you know, because yesterday when we saw that video or the story broke out and all that's been uh, unfolding, it calls for a lot of concern. At the time where people should be having a Merry Christmas, uh, you, you're already getting worried whether your house is going to be destroyed and where you are going to move, you know, it, it's a lot of stress already. Yeah. And I'm just hoping that the state government, as uh, you know, they have spoken, would step into the issue and ensure that um, whatever it is, it's sorted out and that people are not displaced from their homes, whatever well, that, the case that, may well, be. Well, you know, in, in case of dem uh, demolition, you know, I, I, am, um, I agree, you know, with, you know, the idea of compensation. Um, it may not necessarily apply to certain persons. Because remember when uh, I think it was Marco Kor, the you know, some of those areas were demolished, um, you know, or because those people need, needed to be resettled. You know, a lot, we had those arguments on television and on radio back then. Um, about how unfair it was to treat those people like that, you know. So it might apply different for the people of Magodo Phase too, because they are on a higher level. Um, but yes, you know, there should be some, you know, discussion about compensation if there is any uh, legality, you know, exactly with the, with the demolition process itself. 
Um, but I'm also going to mention that I like the fact that the Maguru residents stood up for themselves and didn't turn, you know, the other way because, well, their house wasn't marked yet or because it hasn't come to affect them, you know, because eventually it will get to you. Um, the court order doesn't necessarily say demolish. The court order says, or according to these persons, the court order says, you know, you should take, you know, um, 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 control of the property or the land um, that is supposedly rightfully yours. But, you know, they want to demolish and chase people out of it. But it's a developing story, and I'm sure that we'll continue to follow up. The legacy government luckily has also stepped in, and uh, we would uh, see if we can also bring up those conversations with representatives of the legacy state government and maybe also speak with these uh, demolishers and the person driving the bulldozer, if we can, and uh, hear, what he, hear his own side of the story. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're looking at Nigeria's economy. 17.126 trillion Naira budget for 2022 and what this means, what prospect it has for the next year. We'll be back.